Hello again, welcome to screencast number two for the Cells and Systems Unit. Uh, last time we, uh, I spoke, you listened, <laughs> last time online here we discussed about uh, the different things in living organisms and what those six characteristics were and how every living thing that displays those six characteristics uh, we consider to be uh, alive. Uh, and they have to show all six. Uh, today we're going to focus on something a little bit different uh, that is entitled uh, structure and function. This is really important part of biology structure and function. You'll hear it over and over and over and over again not only in this unit but in your careers as junior biologists. Now all organisms have to perform very certain tasks or functions to stay alive. Eating for example. But we have developed different structures to perform very similar, if not identical, functions. So definitions, let's make sure that we're all on the same page. Okay? A structure is a body part designed to perform a specific task. That could be a leg, a beak, an arm, a snout, a claw, whatever. It's the structure, the actual structure. The function is the purpose of the structure or what it does. Okay, so if we were to say what is the structure that allows us to perform the eating function, well for people the structure is the mouth, the function is to eat. Okay, so some examples. Take a look at these three images. Okay, three different structures. On the left here we have a, f a, a fin, a large whale of some kind, I'm not sure. On the bottom here we have people walking. And then we have the bird, the seagull, the rat of the sky, some people call it. Okay, so all three of these, the fin, the leg, and the, the wing, all have different, they're, they're, they are different structures, but they all perform the same function, and that is transportation or movement. Okay, take a look at this next photo. There's a collection here. We have a giant anteater, an African elephant, anglerfish, Bengal tiger, tiger, in every one of these images, you see a mouth. Okay? You could look at feeding structure, what they feed with, or what they gather food with. So for example, uh, the ant would use the same method of gathering food as it would eating. The elephant would gather food with its trunk, but eat with its mouth. Okay? Different structures, similar functions. This one. Okay? The baby kind of throws you off a little bit, but if we look at these six photos, we are looking at specifically the outer covering or the skin, sometimes a shell okay, or, or feather, I should say. Okay, so we have the bear, its skin or its outer covering gives its warmth. Uh, the frog has camouflage, the lizard has camouflage, the crab has a hard, hard outer shell for protection, okay, and the skin on the baby, that's its first natural defense against diseases and illness. So in these images, oh, and the bird, the, the feathers allow, it, allow water to come off too and uh, allow it to be able to fly. Okay, so the, the layer of skin, so to speak, or the outer layer, uh, all has uh, similar functions and uh, protection. And we have uh, different cells within our body that perform different functions. We have the neuron on the left. We have muscle fibers, the pink ones, and then the purple colored photo. Those are bone cells. Okay? Very different uh, functions, very different structures. Then we have uh, the white blood cells and the red blood cells on the right. And on the left there, we have red blood cells uh, with what we call platelets. That's the clotting agent that actually is the first thing to prevent your blood from continuing to bleed. It uh, forms that nice little mesh and allows it to be, uh, it allows the blood cells to stop, not to keep flowing out your bleeding nose. Okay, so as you can see, there are very large variations between species and their stru structures. Now, similar organisms often have very slight variations in their structures which are sometimes very, very easy to see. And we go to the Galapagos Islands and talk about Darwin's finches. Now, Darwin was a, a very famous uh, scientist hundreds of years ago, 100, 100 and a half years ago, I can't remember. Uh, but he came up with the idea of natural selection. And that was that uh, the stronger of the species survived and that they would uh, uh, eventually evolve, so to speak, into something that uh, or evolve traits that would allow them to survive in their environment. So if we look at these uh, seven or eight birds that are here, uh, these little finches were all observed by Darwin and he hypothesized that there might have been a very common ancestor between all of them. Uh, hard to tell now what that ancestor might look exactly like, 
but his hypothesis was that they had all the common ancestor and their environments had changed them to adapt to the scenario or the, to the environment that they lived in. Uh, their beaks were the number one thing that Darwin was looking at. He was looking at how the different beaks allowed for the birds to grab or eat different things. We have tree finches, we have the one warbler finch, we have ground finches, each beak designed to eat different foods from seeds to cactus to insects to fruit. Okay, And again, that was uh, in the Galapagos Islands, those are Dar uh, Darwin's finches. Okay, And lastly, I do want you, if you get a chance, to, to get a, uh, a really good idea of structure and function when compared to the human jaw versus the jaws of a snake. Uh, check out my YouTube channel. It's an unhinged video. Uh, it's a great video to watch about uh, feeding structures. So I encourage you to go there and check that one out. Uh, that's it for structure and function. Again, very straightforward and simple. Uh, please uh, message me if you have any questions or comments. Thank you.